If you've just got the new Apple Watch Series 9 or Ultra 2, here are 12 things you should do right away to get the most out of your new watch, make it look awesome, and of course, avoid any headaches along the way. I'd like to switch up my watch faces depending on what I'm doing or where I'm going, you know, makes it easy to change things up throughout the day. So to create new watch faces, just press and hold the current watch face, sweep right, then tap the plus button and add new watch faces. Choose the ones that match the vibe, then choose the styles and colors you like most. And finally, add those handy complications that give you the important information you need just by looking at your watch at a glance. So after making different watch faces, when I want to switch, I just hold down on the watch face, sweep right, choose the one I want, and there you go. So for example, when I'm at the gym or out hiking, I pick one that shows activity rings, weather, my workout type, and my workout music. And for work, I go for a more professional look with easy access to my to-dos and calendar and when hanging out with friends, I keep it minimal and sometimes match my outfit. So cool! So for an easier way to customize your watch faces, you can use the watch app on your iPhone and browse through the watch face gallery. It's got a bigger screen so it's easier to do. I love using the photos watch face. You can pick your favorite photo album and set it with complications. So whenever you raise your wrist or tap the display, it shows you a new photo. Also the portraits watch face is super cool. It highlights people or subjects in your photos and you can choose different styles. So each time you raise your wrist or tap the display, a new photo pops up like this, which is awesome. What's really cool is that you can put your name on your watch and really make it yours. It only works with a few watch faces though. So first head to settings, then clock and set your monogram by typing your name. And after that, when you're customizing a watch face, scroll to the bottom and you should see the monogram option. Turn it on and your name shows up on your watch. How cool is that? Also, you can head to discover tab and explore watch apps. There you'll find a variety of apps like to-do lists, sleep trackers, and fitness apps. Also a cool tip is that if you're someone who switches between different focus modes a lot, once you've set up your watch faces, just go to the focus modes on your iPhone and from there you can pick a watch face for each mode. For example, when you're in a workout mode, you can have your workout watch face on. It's a cool way to make your watch fit your routine. The Smartest Stack is super useful, giving you easy access to what you need. You can bring up the Smartest Stack with a double tap and scroll through it the same way. To customize it, sweep up from the bottom, hold your finger on the stack and tap the minus to remove or plus to add apps like your to-dos, calendar. You can also pin the most used ones by tapping the pin button. For the settings, I would say it's easier to do it on the watch app on your iPhone because it gives you a bigger overview of the settings. So first, I'm going to cut down on notifications because they can be super distractive when they're coming through both on your iPhone and your watch. So in settings, go to notifications, you'll see iPhone and watch apps. You can scroll down and find the ones that mirror iPhone alerts. So by default, they're all on, which is so overwhelming. So I'll turn off notifications for apps I don't need to check constantly. And then I'll stick to important stuff like messages, emails, and calls. Also, as for the activity notifications, I really like the app, but it's sending me too many extra alerts. So I'll turn off the ones I don't need, like daily coaching and special challenges. Then I'll turn on tap to show full notifications to keep my notifications private from people next to me. Next, in settings, look for show notifications on wrist down and turn off notifications for any apps that aren't important to you. So this way, when my wrist is down, I'll only receive notifications from the apps I choose to keep on. Next, I'll go to the app view settings. You can choose between grid or list view. 
The list view is clear and more organized for selecting apps, but personally, I love the grid view. It's so cool. In the grid view, you can arrange apps by holding down on them and dragging to where you want. I'm going to put my most used apps at the top for easy access. First in general, I make sure to turn on automatically update in software update. Next, I'll go to watch orientation and set it to the right wrist. This makes sure that when I raise my wrist, my Apple Watch wakes up and when I turn the digital crown, things move the way I expect. So since I'm right-handed and wear it on my left wrist, the digital crown should be on the right side. Then I'll look for background app refresh. It keeps app content up to date, even when you're not using them. Like, your mail inbox stays updated even when you're not using mail, but it can drain your battery. So to save battery, I'll keep it on for apps I use often and off for the ones I hardly open. And remember, apps with complications on your current watch face will keep refreshing even if their background app refresh setting is off, so don't worry about them. So make sure to enable dictation and auto punctuation. They are great for typing on your small watch screen. Just tap the mic icon, start speaking, and your Apple Watch will convert your voice to text accurately. And it automatically adds punctuation, which is pretty cool. You can also use night stand mode, so when your Apple Watch is charging, it shows a time, date, and any alarms you've set, so just tap the screen to wake up the watch and see the time. Also, I definitely turn on screenshots. So if there is something important on your watch, like your workout records, for example, just press the digital crown and side button at the same time to take a screenshot and it'll be saved in your photos app on your iPhone. So in a storage, you can see how much space you've left and which apps are using the most storage on your watch, which is so useful. So I usually have a lot of stuff on my desk and it gets messy most of the time. That's why I got the Moft Smart Desk Mat and it helps me a lot to stay organized. You can set the mat in three different angles and use it as your base. And depending on what you need, you can customize it with tablet holder, Apple Watch holder, a MagSafe wireless charging, book holder, and also cable organizers. What's really cool is that you can arrange it however you want. All my stuff fits on this mat. And if you get tired of sitting behind your desk while working from home, you can just move it wherever you want to sit and keep working with everything you need, like your iPhone, MacBook, and Apple Watch. I also got this functional laptop carrier sleeve, which is also an invisible stand. You can set it in two different angles, which is perfect for when you wanna work in a coffee shop or on the go. You guys can find the links to these functional products in the description below. Now let's adjust some important settings in display and brightness. First, I'll adjust the brightness and text size to how I like it. I usually keep the brightness around the middle and choose a slightly smart, text so I can fit more on the screen. Now about the always on display, it's a really handy feature. It keeps your watch face and time visible even when your wrist is down, but if you want to save battery, you might want to turn it off. So for the sake of the battery, I'll turn it off most of the time. And I'll make sure to enable wake on wrist raise and wake on crown rotation. So. I can tap or raise my wrist to see the time. You can also adjust the brightness slightly using the digital crown to read the time. So if you decide to turn on always on, your watch will always display the time and you can even customize which complications, apps or notifications show when your wrist is down. And also in wake duration, you can pick how long your watch stays awake before it goes back to sleep. In gesture, make sure to enable double tap feature. It's really handy. Just tap your index finger and thumb together twice to answer calls, reply to messages, play and pause your workout music, or view your smart stack. So pro tip, if you enable cover to mute, just cover the display with your hand to silence incoming calls. It's really handy during meetings or when you're focused on work. Now let's adjust some Siri settings. I didn't use Siri much on my MacBook or my iPhone, but on the Apple Watch, 
it's a game changer. Now I use it a lot, especially for replying to messages. So first, I'll turn off Listen for Hey Siri to save time and battery whenever I use Siri. Then I'll make sure to turn on Raise to Speak and press Digital Crown, so this way I can just raise my wrist and speak to activate Siri or I can press and hold the digital crown and ask Siri to help. Next, if you want to feel a gentle tap on your wrist for notifications, go to sounds and haptics and turn on haptic alerts if it's off by default. I like feeling the vibration on my wrist. It's subtle, especially when I'm busy or working out. Also, I could make them stronger by tapping prominent, but I'm okay with the default setting. So there are some security measures that you need to set up for emergency purposes, which could be so useful. So in settings, go to passcode, make sure you have a passcode set up, enable erase data. So if somebody steals your watch and enter the passcode wrong 10 times in a row, it'll erase all your personal data on your Apple watch. It depends on you, but I would do that. Also, you need to know if you hold the side button, you can call emergency quickly. And if crash detection is on, which I suggest to turn it on, I would scroll down to the bottom, go to edit contacts in health and create my medical ID, like all my personal info, like medical conditions, allergies, blood type and more. And also here, I would add an emergency contact so they will receive a message saying that I have called emergency services and my current location will be included in these messages. So there's a neat feature that lets you control your Apple Watch from your iPhone screen. You can enable it by going to your iPhone settings, then accessibility and turn on Apple Watch mirroring. Now you can see and control your Apple Watch screen directly from your paired iPhone. Finally, if you want to unlock your MacBook easily with your Apple Watch whenever you open it, just go to Touch ID and Passcode on your Mac and make sure to turn on Allow Apple Watch to unlock your Mac. So guys, that's the 12 things you gotta do with your new Apple Watch to make it yours. Let me know in the comments below what other things you do when you get a new watch. Hope you liked the video. Stay tuned for more tech tips. See you soon.